here's the setup. Uh, I've got a this here is a current uh, is the ammeter. We're, that's measuring the current through the through the simple circuit. And to the right, there's a we're measuring the voltage there across the load resistor. And on the left here, this indicates the uh, the temperature. Uh, at the moment it's showing 20, 21 degrees. So what I'm going to do is here's our circuit there. I'm going to be going in there. This is the uh, temperature probe. At the moment I've got it connected to our initial resistor, which is the resistor value uh, 1 ohm. So I've got it connected. It's touching the 1 ohm. Probably won't see it with this resolution on this camera. But uh, this temperature probe here is connected with this uh, uh, simple connector against the resistor there and uh, <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is uh, is throw on the the power um, and I'm going to be running this at 8 volts uh, so it's going to be a fixed 8 volts through, throughout and uh, then I tabulate the the voltage here uh, the temperature and the current for each one of these resistors so I'll I'll work through them now and uh, that's my temperature probe going off so I'll just reset that at the moment so now I'll switch on the power and uh, start taking results. So uh, the current, uh, although you probably won't have seen this, but the current has now moved up to about uh, between 70 and 80 milliamp milliamps. And uh, we've got a voltage there showing of 0.9 volts. So, uh, and the temperature, give it a bit of time for the temperature to, to stabilize but it was showing 20 for originally that's uh this is the problem you do have to wait a while for the temperature to get up to its uh, to its value but i'm going to go with that that's 21 so i'm going to write my first uh entry now as uh 21 degrees the voltage is showing uh, 0.9 and the current is is showing approximately 75 milliamps then I can multiply these together I'll do that at the end so I'm just going to just go through the experiment now to get all the results down and then I can calculate the power values and then I can plot out all of these values on a graph so I'm just going to go through them all now so on to the next one which is the 10 ohms take that off now I'm going to connect the temperature probe to the 10 ohm and then I'm going to connect up the the my uh, connection wire. So now I'm going across the the ten ohm. So we should see that the the voltage will change. And uh, yeah, we've got a voltage change now. So uh, the voltage is now showing 0.7, and the temperature has gone up to 24, and it's still going up. It's 25 and we're on 10 ohms now and the current is now showing approximately about 70 about uh, 70 milliamps so uh, we'll tabulate those values so uh, let's call that 25 that's showing about 25 C uh, so that the temperature has gone up the voltage is now gone up to 721.7 of a volt now instead of 0.09 and uh, the uh, amperage has dropped slightly it's now 70 milliamps and on to the next one so I'm going to remove this one now and go on to the next one which is 100 ohms so I've now connected my my probe and uh, going to connect so that the current's flowing through this next one now um, I've actually connected it to the wrong one now we're going to connect this to the 100 I connected it to the 270 so that was incorrect I'll put that back now so now we're uh, measuring across the 100 ohm resistor and we can see that the voltage has changed quite dramatically on that one uh, the voltage is now showing 3. Point Eight seven three point eight seven. Uh, the uh, the temperature is going up, 
uh, and the the current uh, has now dropped uh, quite significantly. Now the current is showing uh, approximately 45 milliamps. So we can plot that down. Uh, 45 milliamps. I'm going to let the uh, the temperature stabilize a little bit there. Uh, so the voltage is showing 3.8. 3.87 and the uh, the temperature now is showing 34 degrees so you can see it's gone up quite a bit the temperature as we'd expect so I'm going to go through the rest of these and uh, and then I'll uh, show you the finished set of uh, tabulated results Okay, I've gone through the uh, experiment now and I've uh, double checked, uh, gone over it a few times and I've got these results here are uh, pretty pretty accurate. Uh, I've, I've taken a couple of readings uh, at each, uh, each go just to make sure they're, they're pretty accurate. Um, now what we've got here is all the values are filled in. Uh, we've got a value for the power here, which is the voltage times the current. So we've got these... Uh, um, tabulated joules values yeah, we got uh, um, you know uh, seven uh, millijoules and uh, we go on 140 uh, millijoules etc so uh, we've got all the energy tabulated and also interesting we got all the temperatures tabulated down the side here you see it goes from 21 25 35 then down to 31 so there seems to be a uh, it's quite clear that there's a, a, sp a spike there at 35 degrees and then it drops off back down to 20 again and where there's 35 degrees in uh, yeah we can we can see it's at 100 ohms I mean, 100 ohms is actually what the source resistance is so um, this is actually showing here even in the t you can see this even in the tabulated values that the uh, the maximum energy in other words that's the maximum heat here that's being released by this re uh, resistor which is obviously the maximum uh, energy and also if we see at the energy value here that's 0.17 joules and uh, from there it goes down uh, there's 0.05 and when we go above uh, 100 ohms we see it's dropped again 0.14 so that's the maximum energy and obviously the maximum energy uh, is is being uh, picked up by this heat uh, the, the resistance is uh, converting that energy to heat and that's why we've got 35 degrees C so so in this tabulated uh, set of results we can't really easily see the correspondence between the energy and the temperature so what I've done is I've uh, plotted these on a graph and scaled these so that we can see how they relate to see what the profiles look like so I'll show you that now okay I just get that in so you can see the plot um, let's go back a bit so you can see all of this plot okay right so I'm just going to uh, move the camera a little bit so we can get a proper view of that, of the, of the uh, data there. And uh, I'm going to go up there so we can get a proper view of that now. Okay, so uh, what I've got here is uh, I've plotted both those uh, values out. So I've got uh, the power here. Uh, I've tabulated those values down the left and on the right hand side I've also tabulated the temperature and I've taken the maximum and minimum here and scaled the graph for those set of data and the same I've taken the maximum power and the minimum here and then I've plotted the values out and this is a very interesting thing you see they're almost uh, identical so the squares here these are the power these are the power tabulated power values and the circles are the tabulated temperature values and you can see here look they're both on top of each other this one they're very very close here at the peak of this curve uh, they're very close again and here they're very close here they're on top of each other and uh, I didn't the rest go right across here but there's no need to to do all of them we've just got a, a good sample of them to see what's going on I've drawn the, uh, a line through here and you can see that the maximum value here as I, as I shown on the tabulated values is 100 ohms so we've proved here the the maximum power theorem also we've proved quite nicely that the energy from the battery 
definitely is uh, is used up by the resistor as heat yeah so uh, that's what I wanted to try and show you empirically the proof of uh, the maximum power theory but more importantly uh, how resistors actually burn up energy from the battery because that's what's going on uh, with all circuits it's uh, energy that's being used uh, and that's what all circuits do they use up energy so uh, I hope that's been useful and uh, catch you on the next video